you know your door sill, that threshold that makes up the uh, bottom most part of the opening of your car when you step in? It's the part that'll say uh, Honda or Nissan or Toyota on it for most of you. Ford in this case. Imagine, if you will, that your door sill, which is usually made of plastic or tin or very thin metal, imagine if your door sill made up the bottom most body line of your vehicle it would probably look terrible. Nowadays, cars have rocker panels um, and not just a body line built into a door sill. I wasn't gonna do a video on this part. In fact, I was gonna just fold these on and make a video about something else, but these are such a pain in the butt to get right that I figured I would show you the process. Okay, so before you can put your door sill in place, you need to uh, attach your door sill reinforcement bracket. Um, that's what keeps the door sill from sagging and your body line from really getting screwed up when you step in and out of the car. Um, I'm going to try to never step on this door sill <laughs> because I just think that's gonna open myself up to all kinds of trouble. But anyway, um, I've got a key code in place right now. I'm just gonna remove one Clico at a time and drill. Clicos aren't super strong, um, so you gotta kinda go easy or it'll get everything out of whack. Um, I've kinda given up on the rivets so far on this. I could probably actually get to, to this with the bucking tool, um, but it's, I've got so many of these little button head allens on this project that I'm just gonna keep going with that. going the hardened washers on the back side too because there's just not enough room Okay, now that everything is assembled, I take this opportunity to hit the exposed bolt heads and anything else that's gotten scratched with a coat of primer. All right, so now that the primer's had a couple of minutes to dry, we can do our first test fit of our sill. You have to basically scoop the sill down underneath and then roll it into place. And then you kind of have to force it. And this side lines up about 100 times better than the other side. But let me grab the camera and I can show you where the issues will be. So the other side, the body line itself, the line, the crease, was really low. Um, it was kind of like in the middle of this one. Here the crease is in the right place, but as you can see, the panel hangs way further down than the body. And then in the front, it looks like it's sticking out really far though I'd rather have that scenario than the other one because I can I can roll this under to a certain extent um, even though it's kind of tricky okay so first things first this uh, little tab is sticking out way too far and the only way to get it to go back in is with brute force That 
as you're hitting it with the hammer, you're just kind of eyeballing the distance between it and the body line uh, that it's meeting up with. So that's about right. Go ahead and hit this one in a little bit too. And that's about right. Now we need a little teeny bit more primer. All right, let's recheck this fit. That's actually much better. I'll be able to roll those lines in. Well, I guess I should have shown you guys the difficult side. This side's so far way easier. So now we need to just drill our holes and, uh, and get our bolts in place because that's what's gonna hold everything tight while I beat on it with a hammer. center two, snug those up, and then we'll drill the last two. <clears throat> Always start with a uh, small pilot hole. chips real quick. Got some junk hardware that I'm going to use for the time being. Um, I've got some nifty brass hardware that I'm going to replace it with at the end for final install. But I don't want to beat on it with the brass because uh, the brass is a little softer and it could potentially break or bend. So we'll use this stuff to get going here. So now with everything snugged up, I can start trying to work this edge a little bit to, uh, to bring things in line. I'll give you another look too, since everything's snug, so you can see what we're working with. Actually, go ahead and close the door. Now keep in mind, the body isn't shimmed yet. It's not actually mounted to the frame. Um, but these lines aren't gonna change that much. I'm gonna tilt the cowl, which is gonna bring the door down. Like that. Um, but as you can see, when I, when I do that, nothing really changes. So unfortunately, this gap here isn't gonna be fixed unless I go in and weld material. And for this project, I'm not that concerned. Um, the front is a lot better after hitting it with the hammer. Um, I just need to roll the bottom edge up so that, uh, so that the bottom line of the car is a continuous line. I guess I'm trying to make hand signals here <laughs> while holding the camera. 
that's really weird. Anyway, um, so let me let me get back. Uh, <laughs> I'm tired. It's been a long weekend. Um, let me get the camera set back up on the tripod, and uh, we'll get to work on this bottom edge. All right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get in here with just my bare hands and uh, see what can be done. And not much. All right. So my second party trick is a, a block of wood and some big channel locks. slow here because it's really easy to go too far. So I've still got the gap, but the line matches up now top and bottom, which is pretty good. So let's try to attack this front with the uh, same technique. I'm sorry that the door is in the way of you guys getting a really good view of this. Um, I just really don't want to take the door off right now. just where it meets up with the body that it's still out of whack. So I can't really hammer and dolly it. Hopefully you can see that. Block back out. Should probably be wearing safety glasses. Pretty close. 
maybe as close as we're going to get it. <clears throat> Go back with the uh, pliers a little bit more. Oh, these spider webs are uh, some fun. Fall down on you. Thing about this sort of uh, work is little steps are much bigger than big steps. I'm calling it. Just a little teaser of uh, things to come. All right, guys. Thanks again so much for watching this week. Um, glad to get the Roadster back in the mix with the new project. Um, next week, look for the Mustang. Um, we're going to be installing a lightweight flywheel and uh, doing some before and after footage to kind of see how much of a difference flywheel weight actually makes. Anyway, I really appreciate all of you who tune in week after week to see my progress on these projects. Um, it's tough coming out with a video a week. Um, you know, I work maybe an hour or two a night during the week. Uh, really probably more like an hour a night during the week. Um, have a newborn and, uh, and a pretty demanding corporate job. So uh, my time out here during the week is short. And then on the weekends, it's like, I'm lucky if I get a half a day. Um, so cranking out a video every week is tough. But at the same time, you know, feeling that need to kind of keep the content constantly coming out keeps me going on these projects. So that's, that's a big plus for me. You guys are keeping me honest. So anyway, I really do appreciate each and every one of you, uh, all 460 of you now. It's kind of humbling. Anyway, thanks again so much. Uh, please hit that like button if you like what you saw in today's video. Hit me up in the comments to let me know what you want to see more of in future episodes. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel because that helps me out a lot. You do that, I'll keep the videos coming. Anyway, thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you next week. See you then.